at uh, the lakeshore this morning. Um, just wondering how you guys went on with uh, thinking about your thoughts, uh, about acknowledging your thoughts and um, exploring where your thoughts originated from. Uh, it is a complicated process, isn't it? Uh, this is uh, Tugner on Lakeshore, this is Matthew James and uh, I really was just moving on from yesterday's video, the one where I was going on about uh, are your thoughts your own? Um, I'm in sort of a, uh, a strange place where I actually, what I call, walk between the worlds um, and identifying and owning thoughts and thought processes and thought patterns are really important in the work that I actually do because I have to question every connection, every thought, every idea that uh, comes into my mind and I have to um, go through a process of analysis to see if they are my thoughts because obviously I'm passing information on, on to clients and people and there are major, major consequences. So if I get um, thought processes wrong and I pass the wrong information on to people then hey, I'm, um, I'm really in trouble. So uh, yeah, this is... Uh, why I always um, question thoughts, question thought processes, and I, I work through the analysis, which I'm actually talking about to you guys, um, all about um, owning thoughts and knowing thoughts and recognizing thoughts, and what are the consequences of your thoughts and your actions. There is a hijacking going on. Um, there is a uh, prejudice, um, there is a normality issue, there is an acceptance issue, um, there are perceptions that are uh, not your own being placed in your mind on a daily basis and this is really what I have been talking about. Isn't it glorious here at um, the, lake shore this the lake shore this morning? Look at the, the sun behind me. Um, I will be doing a few more videos here so um, catch you later guys. Okay, where I normally walk, which I call the, well, which is called the Arambi Hills, that is the Arambi Hills there, and you can see uh, one of the uh, the summits there. This is uh, fantastic scenery as far as I'm concerned. Having this on uh, on my doorstep is just incredible, and be able to come here um, in the early morning and get some peace, some quiet, some tranquility, some uh, early morning spirituality. Um, to be able to have my thoughts uh, really uh, blessed by uh, such an environment is uh, a real blessing and a real uh, thing to look forward to in the morning and I have so much choice around this area and uh, this is just a fantastic um, backcloth for, for my videos. So yeah, that's the one of the Urambi Hills everybody, just uh, in case you are trying to uh, visualise where it is that I go walking, you are my witnesses and you are witnessing me and today's videos. Here's the thing, people take things too much for granted. I'm taking a picture of um, two cormorants here in a tree and two ladies walking past, middle-aged, just make a comment to each other. Huh, they're only, they're only shags, they're only cormorants, what's he taking pictures of those for? Well that's not the point, the point is that the nature, the living beings, living, breathing consciousness like we are, they're part of nature and shamanically they are just as important as we are on this earth plane and it is every right, I have every right and we have every right to acknowledge what's around us, not take what we have around us for granted because there might come a time when there's no longer any shags in trees, there's no longer uh, the, the birds and the animals and the trees and what will we do then, we'll be thinking, oh dear I remember those birdies, I should have paid more attention to them. So really it is important um, sh as a, sh a shamanic uh, practitioner, as a, a Celtic shaman, to actually bring to your attention nature and the birds and to look at things that are in nature and look at the symbology um, and to look at what is actually occurring around you because Mother Nature uh, is part of you and you are part of Mother Nature and on every single day, on every single moment, Mother Nature out and around here is giving you messages and instructions um, and ideas and inspirations as to 
what is happening in your life and what is actually happening in consciousness and people really need to start uh, grasping that reality get their heads away from the TVs and the phones um, and the iPads and the tablets and even me the laptops and get out in nature more and become part of nature more uh, like the ancients did so we can recapture clairsentience psychic ability we can recapture our, our true selves because our true selves are out in here everything is holographic so we can actually get quite a lot of um, information from from nature so this is why I'm actually going to start on my um, my page uh, through a druid's eyes and um, actually giving insights into daily messages from from nature just a little bit different just to let ga you guys know um, how how I work how I interpret how I symbolize and how I um, how I see what I am being instructed by uh, the universe to contemplate. So there's something else for you guys to have to ponder. Yeah, yesterday we were talking about um, the definition of true mediumship and true mediumship being a, a two-way communication between this world and the other worlds through the likes of me um, who acts as an ambassador for this world but also um, a communicator for the other world. It is two-way. It is me being a bridge between the worlds and it's very important that you get the correct information, um, the accurate information that you receive uh, very dynamically in a very specific way um, as, a, uh, as a medium. Now there are two types of mediumship. We have mental mediumship, which is the thoughts in your head, which uh, really is the is a difficult part. It relies on the Claire audience. It relies on the Claire alliance. It relies on the Claire gustans. It relies on the Claire sentience. It cl relies on the Claire sentiments, uh, the Claire voice. It relies on all the Claires for you to interpret that information or have had the information interpreted for you by your mind when you receive something from beyond the five sensory reality. This is why clairvoyance is not mediumship. It is a means to use the information of the two-way communication from somebody's mother in the other world, somebody's son in the other world, somebody's friend in the other world, some ancestor um, who needs to make that connection with somebody on this world. Now, they're not going to come through just to say hello. They're not just going to come through and say tidy your room because that would be um, not the way that it works. They come through for specific information and specific reasoning. So many mediums will start a message or get at the start of a message and think it's mediumship. But the mediumship is once you get that two-way contact, you have to make the connection. It's a bit like dialing a mobile phone and uh, you're trying to you're trying to be rung from the other side they're trying to connect with you on the other side and you answer your mobile but uh, you don't actually talk that is what it's like when you just make that first connection now um, actual mediumship is very rare in the communications i always say there's about three to seven percent of the messages that are given out are actual mediumship because it is very hard to keep that connection it's very hard to keep your concentration now anybody who says that they do mediumship all the time or anyone uh, any psychic medium who claims that every message that they give is um, mediumship are actually misleading themselves um, they are actually misinformed they are actually um, leading everybody astray by their, their heart, foolhardiness. Now, there is another form of mediumship. Um, it's only happened to me on a few occasions, but it's what they call um, physical mediumship, which is direct voice. Now, direct voice is where you actually hear an external voice, an external communication. Doris Stokes, the famous Doris Stokes, used Claire uh, direct voice. She had that direct voice, so it was actually quite easy because you were just repeating what you were told to say. And it's just like, like the person is standing next to you and giving you the information. That is not something that I actually uh, work with. Um, so I don't have a great experience of direct voice, but I have had names, information, 
thrown at me, shouted to me um, on occasions and it does actually make it actually a lot easier than what they call the mental mediumship. So yes, I'm a mental medium. Do I'm mental. No, I'm seriously, I'm a mental medium, which is very difficult because most of the information is your own thoughts. They are your own thought processes. And I use a technique called mindfulness or mind clearing or the observant mind to become aware of whose thoughts are what. Am I being hijacked by uh, EMF rays? Am I being deluded by information that comes to me? Uh, is my higher self, my greater self creating those thoughts? Or do I actually have um, an external connection with an entity from another dimension that is wishing to communicate? And those are the three, the three possibilities when you have those thoughts in your head. So um, I do really recommend mindfulness, mind clearing, um, the observant mind and students of mine who have partaken in a number of my workshops will uh, acknowledge the mindfulness and how helpful mindfulness is and how helpful the, the mind clearing exercises are that I actually um, use with people and show people and guide people with. So that's um, that's a very important topic that I've actually mentioned today. Uh, mindfulness and is isn't really it important. Fantastic here. Look at the blue sky. Look at the look at the birdies. Look at the the water. Look at the greenery. It is a fantastic place. Um, you have been listening to Matthew James at uh, Tugnaronga Lake Shore, and uh, enjoy your day, everybody. So be aware of your reality. Be aware that it is an illusion. Be aware it all is not what it seems. It's holographic. There is more to it than meets the eye. Question everything. Question everything you see, you feel, you perceive. It's not real. It's just a game. It's just um, a virtual reality in which uh, you have an avatar. You're not actually in your body. You are connected to your body but you're made to think that you're inside this body. Um, we have been misled. We're still being misled. And really the truth needs to be circulated. Everybody needs to realize that this is an illusion. Um, this is just a shadow self. This is just a false self. It's a shadow man, a shadow woman. And uh, yeah, if you could get control of part of you that is driving this avatar you can then change your life oh we're out of focus oh that's not good this is a funny video I'm out of focus Oh, camera, you're being naughty. Oh, this is Matty James trying to squeak. And the camera is being very, very naughty. So this is a squeaky Matty James video because it's, it's not behaving itself, the camera. So here we are in a, a, a fuzzy world, a fuzzy reality. Matty James coming from your past, squeaking, because I'm out of focus. And i got a dirty lens as well. Look at that, everybody, Matty James. Isn't he a fool? Yes, I am a fool. I'm happy to be a fool. Yes, I am. I'm a fool. And it's a sunny morning and I'm doing a squeaky video before I do my work today. Bye for now.